Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Imperator Rome, where we are playing as Rome. And what did we do last time? Well, the big thing that we accomplished last time was more conquest of the Italian territories, which has actually allowed us to finish off our mission. So we have now got a new mission tree which is the Pearl of Italia as opposed to the Conquest of Italia or something like that, which is what I think it was previously. And this is a choice made by chat. So there were four choices. There was the Pearl of Italia. There was one which was partially going for the islands, partially building up Rome. There was one which was going after Carthage. And then there was one which was going after Greece. <clears throat> And chat voted that we were going to do the Pearl of Italia, which is basically building up Rome and its surrounding en environs. So that is what we are going to be doing. We do have our Legion down here currently drilling in order to gain some more experience, in order to be a better at fighting. Is there a limit to what training can get you up to in terms of skill? Uh, yes. I would imagine so. It's whatever the plus 2.5 balance is. A professional training is going to allow it to go even higher. Okay, cool. Uh, the other thing that we do want to do is go after Veneto because they're also allied to Ratia. So that would allow us to consolidate a very large extra chunk of Italy. And in fact, that would be the majority of it, with the exception of the South and Sicily. And going after Syracuse would be a part of that. And also Carthage, who is getting an extended hold down here. We did at one point have an alliance with Syracuse, but that has since been lost. Um, we do still have a couple of feudatories, which we will be trying to annex. In fact, that is something that we should probably take a look at to see if any of these would be feasible to grab. Um, actually, yeah, Nosia. Quite possibly. Once we've gotten rid of the Sacked Holy Site, Malice, our modifier with you will be... Uh, 50 plus 70. Would be 170, so we would need to get another 20. And if we went out of Bellicose Stance, we could get you. And then Frenasia is the really big one. We need just 18 points with you, and in fact, if we've finished improving relations, we can get you up to 190, which means that we can now get this guy actually uh, annexed. So what we're going to do is we're going to start improving relations with you. We have the money for it. Off you go. Then once that hits 190, uh, we should be able to get you. No, I'm misreading this. It's already plus 74, it's 132. We're only going to get another 26. So that's going to be 58. 158. That's not enough. What does it cost to change our stance? Political power. Because we could switch to domineering for a while while we pay off the aggressive expansion. Because we do have a lot of it. So we are going to be in a rather more peaceful stance for a while. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait until our political influence hits 50, and then we're going to change. Didn't even see you come online. Was busy watching some of the last Cobblesand videos. Very Hey, everyone. Yes, hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I feel like I haven't been acknowledging chat as much as I should have been in the last week or two, and I do apologize for that. Just distracted. Um, but yeah, how are you all doing? Hope you're doing well. Happy Friday. If you must break the law, do it to seize power. In all other cases, observe it. Alright, so let's just take a look to see what our missions here are. So Dodecopolis needs to have an extra mine, which will give uh, slave output permanently. The fruits of Pricinium needs to have more farms. Then Ingevum needs to be the capital of Armenium, and we'll gain two free citizens for that. Where are you? Iguvium. 
Iguvium is here. Why would I ever want Iguvium instead of Aretum? Oh, except for the fact that you're just much, much bigger. I think Aretum is the Colonia. It is. Well, hopefully that changes around if the population switches. Otherwise, we'll just have to temporarily make Iguvium the provincial capital, which might actually happen automatically anyway, because it does have the bigger population, and we have seen that flipping regardless. And then we have some choices to make between the Granary of Italia or Bread and Circuses, but we need to get these ones first. Um, <clears throat> the Mines of Dodecopolis, that is a lot of free slaves. So it'll cost us 800 ducats. And they're saying that Dodecopolis must have... Oh, it needs to produce or import wood or olives. One of the following. So wood or olives needs to be there. That can probably be arranged. And also vegetables. Okay. Then the granary of Italia, we need to have 600 ducats. Into Mania, needs to have two granaries. And it will increase the provincial food capacity by plus 800 permanently. Or bread and circuses, which will give us 10 years of National Freeman happiness. I think I'd rather have the permanent provincial food, to be honest. Then the colonization of Armenium needs to have a grand theatre. Gains assimilation, becomes a colonia, and gains a free province. And our colonia also increase assimilation even further. So that could be good. Have three new trade routes in Latium. That's going to be more difficult to get because that's the capital. But it gains two permanent building slots, which would be amazing for getting uh, aqueducts. And prospecting in Dodecopolis. Oh. If prospectors find metals or minerals in Dodecopolis, Dodopolis, you'll be able to change the trade goods produced here. Alright, that's interesting. That seems to be in Perusia in particular. Which currently does livestock. Yeah, that would be quite nice. If we could get... Oh, your hills. <laughs> Thought for a minute you were farmland. I saw that tiny bit of farmland. It's like, oh, could it be? Could we get a gold mine in the farmland? Because that'd be crazy. But no, unfortunately not. While you're waiting for the political power, maybe take the two city-states in the south, even if you have a lot of AE. That is not a bad idea. I guess a few patches from this game. Yes, this game has had a lot of updates. Not really bothered to watch Imperator until these streams. Yeah, I was the same. Like, the last update, I think we played, like, an hour as Massilia or something. At least that's what I had as, like, my last played game. I don't remember that at all. Um, so maybe we just kind of looked around to see what had changed, then kind of decided, eh, it's not enough. Uh, but this one, um, the Marius update, it's a really big change, especially to the military. And the fact that you now have a difference between legions and levies. In fact, speaking of legions, we do need to bring in a new commander. Now, one of the things I was considering, because we have had barbarians appearing in the north, I was wondering if we want to detach some of the units as a cohort to then have them switch to um, hunting barbarians. That is something we can do. Although, that also being said, we have now got roads which go north, which means we can get up there very quickly. Uh, let's find which of these is the Barbarian map mode. And see if there's a way that we can shift these, because we do actually own a lot of the land around the Barbarians. So what is increasing their strength? So the Barbarians will raise 18 cohorts. And 15 there. I think... A large number of those cohorts are because of tribesmen. 
So if we were to get rid of tribesmen, although actually we would need to own this part as well, because that's where a lot of the tribesmen are going to come from. Although that being said, we also have a lot of tribesmen here. I know it is possible to uh, get rid of barbarians eventually, but I don't think we're any going to be anywhere close to doing that for a while. Anyway, let's go ahead and unpause and just let things go on. Before we do that, actually, we did have the suggestion of going after some of these territories, and I don't think that's a bad one. Do we have claims in any of this? We do actually have a claim on you. We don't have a claim on Nuceria, though. Wait. Nuceria. Oh, that's our other feudatory. Okay. So, actually, the only one that we don't own is Alea. And we have a claim on it. So, do you have any alliances with anyone? You have an alliance with Syracruz. And also Arrakis, and also Kalatea. <laughs> um, so that would be the big fight over Syracuse, for which we will definitely need more aggressive expansion capabilities. So yeah, we're, we're just going to have to hold off until we get them. If you get your civilization value high by the barbarians, they will disappear. Okay. Good to know. Oratory advances. We have got level 7, which increases our country civilization level. Okie dokie. So let's see if there are any inventions for oratory that we want. We were moving over here for the policy cost ch change. We get a bunch of freemen. Population capacity and oratory provincial investment cost changes. Assassination change. Endorse party cost. We haven't been doing very much endorsing of parties. This is a lot of... Oh, hang on. Subject opinion. Well, here's the thing. I don't intend to use subjects very much, so I don't think it's really worth going down the subject opinion pathway. Census data could be good. That could also give us another diplomatic relation leading to diplomatic reputation. We just don't use many of these oratory powers at all. Diplomatic reputation would make it easier to make friends. I think I'm going to do this because this is building up Rome and that is our stated goal right now. So we're going to grab census data. This is going to increase the population capacity and oratory provincial investment cost. And we also gain that free province and five more population. The practice of taking a census is said to have first appeared in the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. In a wider scale, however, it became a vital to the continued administration of the Roman Republic, providing valuable data about the ethnicity and details of the dwellers therein. Alright, so Rome is now probably actually over its population capacity. No, it's at it. Okay. And we do have another building, and I think the last one we did was an aqueduct, and I think we probably need another aqueduct. Because the population of this place just keeps on changing. Although, we could also start to shift our population. I think it has to be an adjacent one, right? Can you move from Ostia? Yes. So it's adjacent or to anywhere in that province? I mean, we could also use the population of Rome to fill out some more of these areas. I do kind of wish there was a little bit more gradual movement. Migration attraction is down because of over overpopulation, so people should be moving.
I thought there's a bunch of people moving to Rome. No! Don't move to Rome! That's saying that we have three aqueducts. Each aqueduct is worth four. Oh, sorry, it's worth three. Three times four is twelve. Actually, no, that's not right. Because you're right, they should be four each. And... No, that's right, yeah, that's right. Each aqueduct is four, there are three aqueducts, that's twelve population. What it's not saying is there's going to add another four. Which this is saying. Capacity goes up by 4. Migration attraction goes up by 0.9. But why are we getting other results? Population capacity to 90. I'm not sure. Oh, and also we have free province investments. So we could get another building slot. We could get the import route. We can get the population capacity. Oh, that's why. We have a bunch of uh, infrastructure spending already. Or we can go for the provincial loyalty. We don't need that. This is the capital. So this is either going to be population capacity, which I think I have actually been stacking. Or the import routes. And if we get the import routes, is that going to count for this? I don't think it is. Well, there's one way to find out, actually. Let's see if it counts towards that already. Let's take a look. Oh, and it'll take a year. Okay, that's not quite so easy to check. You know what? Let's just leave it. Until we've done these. So we need to get... Pycenium needs to get settlements. And then we also need granaries in Pycenium. Where even is Pycenium? It's over there. You know what? Sod it. We'll leave it. We can always get more through buying investments. So Pycenium, you need to build farming settlements, right? Yes. This is the one time where this map mode may actually be useful. Alright, off we go. And I think that another part of the development of Italia in general does mean that we need to go and build a bunch more of these buildings. Try and get the mines, try and get the farms going, because that's going to allow us to make a lot more products, which we can then sell. Military tradition. Here we go. So the Fabri will allow us to get three more innovations if we do this. Oh, innovations are technologies, aren't they? Do I want to spend a tradition on innovations? Or do I want to instead build up my discipline and my heavy infantry combat? And also levy size. Or even go down the italic tree and start getting some fort defense. National fort infrastructure capacity plus one. Oh, and Rome also gets a free fort if we do this. And in fact, the Federati increases the opinion of all of our minions. Which, for many of those, would be enough to integrate them. So 
So surprised the vote went the way it did and meant we'd go economic and not attack Macedon. I am shocked by that. Like, the, the vote for Macedon wasn't even close. It was a distant third. It was between Pearl of Italia or... I can't even remember what the first one, uh, what the other one was. There was a difference of like 4% between those two. It was like 46 to 42. It was that close. And then the other four was so distant behind. Hang on, do I still have the poll details up? I do. Uh, first Provincia, that was going after Syracuse. So the matter of Italia was going after Sardinia, Sicily, and Corsica. Subduing Greece is obviously going after Greece. The first Provincia was going after Sicily. And then the Pearl of Italia was going after Greece. Uh, sorry, building up Rome. Chat voted to build up Rome. 47% to 45. It was actually even closer than I just said. <clears throat> and actually, with that in mind, I think we're going to do the walled city. Because we are building up Rome. Heavily fortified cities dotted the landscape of the Italian peninsula for generations. In Rome, the Servian Wall looms high, built after the catastrophic sacking at the hands of Brennus the Gaul, and affording the inhabitants a small measure of peace from the strife to come. And so with that, Rome is now a level 8 of 7. So we are going to be paying a little bit of extra for the walls in Rome. But Rome is now a level 3 fortification, which is pretty nice. That also used up my building slot. <laughs> Damn it. Didn't think about that. And ships should still be set to hunting pirates. They are. Everything is relatively quiet at the moment. So at the, we're currently just waiting to get the money to build more stuff. And in fact, we have the money to build more stuff. So where's Pycenium? Pycenium is here. Where was another place that I need to build? So Materium and Cementum needs to have farming settlements. What do you have at the moment? You have a port. We'll get rid of the port and we'll build a farming settlement here instead. And then Cementum will be the next. Barbarians! We knew it was going to happen. 8,000 of them. But we do have a fort set up there next to the uprising. So let's have you guys stop your drilling and have you charging north. And then I think after this we might leave... The legions in Libana. Because all of the problems are going to be up here in the north where the barbarians are. In the south we have no real issues. And Latium has its trade route. Now does that count to this? Yes it does. Okay, good. So any trade routes that we gain now in Latium is good for us. Oh, I want the update. So, um, Arheo, who is the lead developer for Imperator Rome, tweeted out an update to the trade screen. And it is so much better than this one. Oh, man, I need to go and find it because it's, it's worth sharing because this is exactly what this game needed. So give me just a second. Arheo. Click on you. Click on you. Click on share. Copy link to tweet. So this is how the new screen will look. And you will notice that there are giant numbers next to the uh, values. And those numbers represent how many trade routes you can actually establish of that trade thing. Not the number which are available, the number which are actually usable. Which I can't wait for. That's going to be so helpful. We don't have a second wood source here. And there are none. Huh. 
Oh, and they've also added this. You can say on the provincial overview who you want to trade with. And yes, that is something we were looking at doing, actually, was making Rome into a metropolis, for which we need 100 political power. What was it we were saving the 50 for? I've totally forgotten what the 50 was for. We need to do that. I need to remember what that was for and then do it. Iron. Oh, we don't have iron? Well, we're going to get iron. Because we want to have the iron buff so we can get the extra heavy infantry discipline. I can't believe we lost our iron buff. It's bad. Are you trying to cementum your rule? Ooh. Oh, you guys are still on the way. Here we go. Battle is joined. 12,000 of Rome's best versus a bunch of dudes in platformed wheels. And we also have the bottleneck, which is beating shock. Our infantry. How's the heavy infantry fighting? Uh, don't I get an over? Ah, now I am. Plus 40% discipline. Plus 20% against their archers. Damage from 477 men fighting against them. Zero. Plus 179% morale. Ooh, okay. That still doesn't tell me what my offensive and defensive combat abilities are. I was expecting that to show here. Now that plus 40 discipline, does that include the 20 from this? Is there a way of seeing that, I wonder? sure. Well, regardless, it's going to be an incredibly quick fight. <laughs> and we gained two pops from that. And then we'll go and sit here in Libana. We'll make that our northern garrison. And we will fortify. No, we will start training. Because apparently drilling doesn't actually cost you anything. Uh, trade in flux. Our trade agreement with Veneto has yielded a splendid return on investment along with the flow of wealth between the two states. The movement of people is accelerating. Strike the earth. Get me some more population. We can go back to drilling. And then if we go back to the barbarian map mode, we'll see that you've tricked down to zero. Whereas the power here is ticking up. I think once the, those power numbers hit 10, I think that's when they trigger. If memory serves. Okay, so you need to have a farm. And then that's going to be you finished. And then we can go to Bread and Circuses or Granary of Italia. Granary of Italia means that this place needs to have two or more granaries. The problem is it's a settlement, so we can only build one building. So what you're telling me is this needs to become a city first. Yeah, has city status. 